Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Guys Tech. Today we're going to be continuing our search for the best budget AV receivers on the market, and that's why we're taking a look at the Onkyo TXNR595, which we bought from Costco for $400. So let's put it to the test and see how it performs right after the intro. <music> All right, so before we get into the review, let's see what comes in the box. Right on top, you get a remote control, a pair of batteries, your setup microphone, AM and FM antennas, as well as the rest of your documentation. With all of that out of the way, the only thing left is the receiver itself. And the first thing you'll notice when looking at the NR595 is the clean look of the faux brushed aluminum faceplate. At this price point, it's pretty uncommon to see aluminum actually being used on the front of a receiver. But we think Onkyo actually did a great job making this look like real brushed aluminum. And we think it looks great. Something else we really like about this receiver is the fact that they still include a row of dedicated input buttons. A lot of receivers have gone to a menu-based interface to change inputs, which in my opinion isn't quite as convenient. Taking a look at the rest of the front panel, we also have a power button, the music optimizer button, which Onkyo claims improves the quality of compressed audio, a listening mode button. Pressing this will activate the listening mode knob below so you can change the listening modes, and then a tone button and knob which allows you to adjust bass, mid-range, and treble. In the middle section, we have the Zone 2 on and off buttons, a quarter inch headphone jack, and on the right side, we have the cursor buttons for navigating through the menus without a remote. And below those, setup, enter, and return buttons, which do the same thing as they do on the remote. And finally, we also have ports for the setup microphone and auxiliary 3.5 millimeter inputs, and a big shiny volume knob which appears to be plastic but feels pretty good. Now as far as the appearance of this receiver goes, it's pretty subjective. You're either going to like it, dislike it, or you're going to be somewhere in between. We actually really like the way this receiver looks. It gives the impression that you're looking at a much higher end receiver rather than a more budget friendly entry level model. So we think that Onkyo has done a great job with the aesthetics of this receiver. Moving around to the back of the unit, the first thing we'll see are the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas for connecting to the internet or Bluetooth players. You'll also get HDMI 2.0 ports, which all support HDCP 2.3 content. There are six inputs and two outputs here, and the main output offers HDMI ARC, but keep in mind that this is not full, uncompressed eARC support, just regular ARC. Next, we have an Ethernet jack, and to the left of that, we also have a USB port. This lets you play uncompressed music files like DSDs or FLAX from a USB flash or hard drive. Below that, we have the binding post for connecting up to a 7.1 surround system or a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos system. You also have two pairs of binding posts for running Zone 2. We also have line outs for two subwoofers, which both output the same signal. And there are also outputs for zone B, which can also be used to add external amps to power your front, left, and right channels separately if you choose. There's also coaxial and optical inputs, AM and FM antenna inputs, funnel preamp inputs, and line level RCA inputs. And just in case you were wondering, the receiver weighs in at 27 pounds or about 13 kilos. Moving away from the receiver itself, let's talk about the remote. It seems like your typical black, all plastic remote, but it actually feels pretty good in your hand. And it has all of the necessary buttons that you'll need to control everything on your AV receiver. All right, so next we're gonna talk about features. And that's where we think this Onkyo receiver really shines, but not quite in the way you'd expect. And you know, let's go ahead and clarify what we mean by that. This receiver comes with all the surround sound formats that you'd expect, like Dolby Atmos, DTSX, DTS Virtual X, 
and Dolby Atmos height virtualization, and the latter two have already been added with a firmware update. Now obviously you're not going to get anything like IMAX Enhanced or DTSX Pro at this price point, but to be fair, there aren't any manufacturers that offer these features in a receiver this affordable. One thing that we like about Onkyo is that they're still using linear class AB amps in their receivers. Some companies have switched their receivers to a class D or even a class H amplifier topology, which can be more efficient, but in some cases will end up having a higher total harmonic distortion rating. As far as power output, this receiver is rated to deliver 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms with two channels driven. It's also rated for a continuous 6 ohm load and is certified down to 4 ohms, so you should have no problem powering a wide variety of speakers. Another really useful feature is the receiver's bi-amp capabilities for the front channels. This allows you to use the surround back or height speaker outputs to power the mid and high frequencies of your speakers while the front left and right connections handle the low end of your speaker. Obviously, this only works if your speakers are able to be bi-amped. And of course, this receiver also lets you stream content from online services like Pandora, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tidal, and more. And it also integrates the services like Sonos, Apple AirPlay, DTS PlayFi, and Flare Connect. I think for the features that this receiver lacks, like the HDMI 2.1 and everything that comes along with that, like VRR and ALLM, it still offers a lot, especially if you would never use those features to begin with. Now to test the sound quality of the receiver, we hooked it up to our usual equipment and you can see a list of everything we have down in the description below. As always, we tested this receiver with both movies and music to get a good feel for its sound signature. But before we started testing out some of our favorite movies, we had to set up the receiver and that's where the Onkyo really surprised us. The user interface built into this receiver is very easy to use and the graphical interface looks something like you'd expect to see in a much higher end receiver. We really like the simplicity of the layout and the first time setup was especially easy to use. We also really like the graphical EQ included with the unit. It's easy to fine tune the sound of each of your speakers and it even includes three customizable presets. Speaking of fine-tuning, Onkyo includes a microphone to be used with their room correction software that they call AccuEQ. But as usual, we don't typically use these room correction softwares and prefer to just set it up manually. Alright, getting back to the sound quality, this receiver performed well above what we expected it to, especially considering its price. Dialogue in movies was exceptionally good, with very controlled and tight bass response, and very smooth mids and highs. The separation between the different speakers in our system was also remarkable, and seemed to convey a very large and realistic presentation that really drew us into the movie that we were watching. I also think it's worth mentioning that we only spent five minutes setting up this receiver for our room, and it sounded great. Normally, we spend at least an hour configuring the setup before we're actually ready to start listening tests. And of course, after we dug into the adjustments more, it sounded even better. But if you're looking for a receiver that you can just hook up to your speakers, make minor adjustments, and start watching movies, this receiver is a great option. We also enjoyed listening to music with this receiver, and again, it performed way better than we expected it to, but, as always, sound is very subjective, so we would definitely recommend you personally audition this receiver so you can decide whether you like it or not. The next thing we looked at was the video processing and upscaling quality of 1080p content. And in our opinion, this is where the Onkyo underperformed a bit. In fact, if you have a good upscaler built into your TV, you may be better off just using that over the upscaler built into this receiver. Now, don't get us wrong, it was perfectly acceptable, but we've seen better. All right, with all that said, the big question is, is the Onkyo TX NR595 worth the asking price of $400? Well, in our honest opinion, yes, it's absolutely worth $400. But if you're looking for all the newest features that come with the HDMI 2.1 spec, then obviously you're gonna have to look elsewhere because this receiver is stuck with last-gen features. 
On the other hand, if you want a great sounding, reliable, and in our opinion, a great looking receiver at a reasonable price, I would definitely put this receiver on your short list. All right, that's pretty much gonna wrap this up, guys. Keep an eye out for our next video because we're gonna be comparing this receiver to the Yamaha RX V6A that we reviewed last week. And at the end of that video, we're gonna tell you which one of these receivers we're gonna to decide to keep and which one we're gonna take back to Costco. If you wanna take a guess at which one we're gonna keep, go ahead, leave it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.